Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're having a closer look at a couple more White Light of Death ones. Um, these are PS4s, of course. Um, and today we're having a look at this one. Now, this one has had a HDMI port replacement and it's still giving us issues. Um, interestingly enough, it did work for a very short time uh, and then decided that it wasn't. Uh, we've metered all the connections out on the back um, and those all checked out okay. Uh, we've metered them out. Um, through the alternate points through um, an HDMI lead uh, plugged into the port and they all read OK so we know we've got connections between all our pins and the various points on the board that it should do so in theory the television should be getting the signal that it requires however on this particular board it isn't now this is um, only a short video because this is of interest um, now basically uh, the one that is raising suspicion is pin 13 on this particular board. So that's pin 13 in from the right hand side. So pin 1 through to pins 19 on this side. So pin 13 actually meters out to this little uh, diode on this side here um, and this contact pad just here. Uh, and basically that backs onto a diode which then goes through to pin 13 on this port. So, if we have a look at that on this board, um, and we'll see if we can get you a shot in of the multimeter to see what we're saying. So, one is open limit, of course, which means there is absolutely no um, connection or infinite resistance between the two points we're measuring, which, of course, we're not measuring anything at the moment, so that's to be completely expected. So, let's just measure this point. to pin 13 on the port and see what it reads. We'll see we get 001 and a beep which basically means we have a direct connection between pin 13 on the port and pin 13 on the board as well which is good so that means in theory we should be okay but the interesting thing with this one is if we read a connection to ground and pin 13 or the diode off the back of pin 13 you'll see we get a very very low resistance to ground we only get 0.5 now interestingly enough before I filmed this particular part of this video um, it was actually beeping to suggest that there was you know some direct connection there so do you think that's interesting okay so we have low resistance to ground from that diode we get a donor board and we're going to read that same component again to ground and we get nothing absolute infinite resistance to ground as you can see nothing there at all nothing across the diode of course we read well on our board Our board. Across the diode, we have a similar reading. But remember, in the back of the diode to its adjacent point reads good. But we also have a very, very low resistance to ground. You can see there we're beeping. If we then read it to say pin 17 from the HDMI port, which of course is ground, because this is a ground pin, you can see again there we have a very, very low resistance to ground, which would suggest that we have an issue, uh, possibly with the backside of this diode. Okay, so we realise that we have a massive short on pin 13 uh, on this on this board. So when we came around here and we measured um, a lot of these components here, all these here were all shorted to ground. Of course, we had the backside of our diode there, and these two points here all shorted to ground. Um, so yeah, and a few down here as well, which were all shorted to ground as well. 
So what we did is we just removed a couple of these to see if we could get uh, these big caps here to see if any of those were responsible for our short. Uh, we just followed the circuit back. Uh, in the end it didn't appear that any of those were our issue. We, um, so of course we replaced those. And the only place that was left really after that, because they all seem to go down vias, uh, to the other side of the board is of course our HDMI encoder IC which we removed uh, and as soon as we've removed that all our shorts disappeared so we've replaced that with a new uh, part here so that is all replaced um, and it's all verified and checked out good so what we're going to do now is we have replaced all our bits and pieces top side and what we will do is I will just pop you on the tripod for a sec so I can show you um, but hopefully this now is going to work so that's one for you to check and not necessarily you know pin 13 but what I'm saying is is if you do have an issue whereby um, you've replaced your HDMI port and you've still got a problem and you've replaced your HDMI encoder IC and you've still got a problem just check those components around the back of it there um, for shorts to ground because of course if any of your pins are or sections of that circuit are short to ground completely then you are going to have problems so we're just going to pop you on the tripod for now okay now you come and we'll see if we can get you a bit of focus on this uh, but around here now so we'll just take you down, hopefully you'll be able to see some of that. I don't want to get you too close because the zoom on this camera is pretty pathetic. So if anybody's got a rather nice camera, can you lend it me please? <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so as I say, we've replaced um, these caps here. We've put those back because those were fine. So now if we measure, remember we were getting a short to ground from the back side of this diode to ground. You can hear now we don't get any beep at all. Um, what we do get is I'll just try and get you in shot with my multimeter here. Oh, this might be quite awkward, but if you'll be able to see that there, hopefully you will. If my hand doesn't block too much of it, but yeah, so we'll go black probe, uh, black probe to ground and from the back side of our diode there and you can see now we have absolutely no interaction with ground which is exactly as it should be the back side there is fine so that's all good um, so what we will do is we will run our little link wires back um, to our HDMI port from the back side of that ground um, we'll go from this pad here to pin 13 then of course from this via here um, to pin 1 uh, and hopefully that will resurrect our PlayStation. So bear with us guys and we will have a look and we'll show you the finished article, hopefully plugged into the TV and working. So um, bear with me and we will do that now. Right, okay, so as you can see there now, uh, we have our two link wires there, uh, one to pin one, one to pin 13. Uh, as I say, we've gone from the um, come from the pad uh, there, the back side of that uh, diode, back to pin 13, and from the via to the uh, the corner pin there, pin one of our HDMI. So we're just going to nail this bomb back together now, and hopefully we're going to get video and audio and everything nice and uh, as nature intended on this PS4. So bear with me guys and we shall see if our um, endeavours have bared any fruit for us. So uh, we'll have a look now. Okay then, so in what is becoming time on the tradition, let's just fire this up. And see what we get. So we get pulsing blue light there. PlayStation logo. Nice sound, nice picture. Welcome back to PlayStation. <laughs> nice white light there on the front of the machine now. And that's that. So we fixed it. So just goes to show 
um, you know that in the event that you've got quite a few shorter components underneath that HDMI IC lift the IC ensure the shorts are gone if they are and that solves your problem then replace the IC um, and that is yet another way of diagnosing a faulty HDMI I see. So I will see you on the next vid, uh, boys and girls. So it's goodbye for me. And remember, play safe and uh, enjoy yourselves. So, bye for me. See you later.